want to talk a little bit about the eternal security of the believer. Back years ago, about the only two Protestant groups that really embraced that was the Baptists and Presbyterians. Uh, I don't know where, even where the Presbyterian stands on that. You, you look back uh, many years ago, the denominations weren't all that different. I'm, I'm just all of them had a King James Bible. Uh, I don't want to go there. Things started separating. But if you would, there's just uh, so many, so many verses. I'm not going to get up through all of them tonight, but so many little things that we never think about on this thing of eternal security. We know that the Bible says we are those who are Paul said we are those who are kept by the power of God unto salvation. I know that when I got saved, there's nothing I did to merit me getting me saved. There's nothing I did to earn it. Paul said, I fear lest any corrupt you from the simplicity that is in Christ. And then, if I didn't do a thing to earn it, how could I do anything? What could I do after that to keep it? It was all God's grace. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. I didn't earn a gift. And uh, Jesus Christ is not an Indian giver. He don't take back what he gave you. But there's a lot of verses that uh, we usually don't equate with eternal security, but it certainly fits. My, my mama was saved in a, a church down in the Kentucky hills, and she thought that she had to live it in order to go to heaven. And, and she was always worried about losing it because you have sinful thoughts, you, and, and you wonder, well, how much... How much Sin has to come into my life before I lose it. And uh, through various denominations, they'll teach different amounts. At what point would you lose it? But it said she was always living in fear. And remember uh, over, over there when, when Paul said, Who has bewitched you? And he talked about putting a yoke of bondage upon the Gentiles, a yoke of the law. Said your fathers couldn't bear it. We talked about that. Brother Sam was one of their main themes in the Amish Awareness con Conference. So you need to get grounded in this if you want to have peace in your life. Otherwise, you'll be fearful all your life. If, if I thought that I could lose my salvation, it would scare me to death because there would be something crossing my mind before I got home that would be sinful. Paul said, I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. And so we, we, our eternal life, we live through the spirit of God. The flesh is still capable of sin. It hasn't been redeemed yet. In fact, Paul referred to it as uh, the, this vile body. One day he shall redeem this vile body. So there's nothing good about you in the flesh as it stands now. And you can... Uh, no matter what you do, you're, it's still going to take God's grace. Now, if you want to live a happy life, you stay confessed up. You sin, you fall into sin, you confess it as sin, you judge yourself, and you give it to God, and you get up and do your best to forsake it and ask God's grace to help you to do that, and you go on for God. And uh, I, I just want to look at, at verses that a lot of times we, we don't think about with eternal security. I'm going to look first at a passage in Matthew 7:21. <laughs> and it talks about something that Jesus Christ knows. And if, if you could lose your salvation, then Christ would have to deny something that he knew. And I'll, I'll read down probably through around uh, verse 30. said, Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Now watch it. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. That's not talking about a man that got saved and lost it. That talks about a man who was never saved. The Lord never knew him. Does that make sense? I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Well, look at, uh, compare that with John 10, John 10, 14. 
I'll read on down through there. Uh, I am the good shepherd, John 10, 14. He says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, verse 15, John chapter 10, even so, now, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. My sheep hear my voice, watch it, and I know them. And they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Never. Never. Well, what if you do that? It says that you, if they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now, uh, another time we'll get into Colossians 2, 2. I don't know if we'll get there tonight. Where if you understand what happens, a spiritual operation that takes place when you, the moment you got saved, it'll help you to know that you can never be lost. But here it says, As the Father knoweth me, even so uh, know I the Father, and lay down my life for the sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I will give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. And I've heard, I've heard uh, folks arguing this point, say, well, you can, you, nobody can pluck you from God's hand, but you can jump out. It, it seems like sometimes we'll, uh, we'll get on, on, on a, a, a biblical point and we'll want to believe something so bad. We've been taught it so long that, that we'll look for every reason in the world to rest the scriptures to keep from leaning on what God, just trusting in what God says. Everlasting, how long's that? Eternal, how long's that? Shall never perish. Duh. I mean, it's pretty clear. Extremely clear. Bible says we're part of the body of Christ. For us to be lost, his body would have to there and it'd have to create a problem with the body. Brother Phil's body is out of commission tonight because of a torn ligament. Christ's body, he wouldn't mutilate his own body by removing part of the body of Christ. Ephesians 5. Amen. Ephesians 5 and verse 25. Ephesians 5, husbands, love your wives, watch it, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Okay, we understand that we are the bride of Christ. That he might sanctify, means to set apart for a holy purpose, and cleanse it with a washing of water by the word, that he might watch it, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy and without blemish. All right, turn to 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Talks about the body, Christ's body. For as the body is one, 1 Corinthians 12, 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Then it says in verse 14, for the body is not one member, but many. But now God, and verse 18, jump down to verse 18, but now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. We're part of the body of Christ. We're bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. He, he, would, he, would, he would have to lose part of his body. Just like that, the uh, tribulation verse, it says you... Uh, uh, the verse one in Revelation talks about God spewing you out of his mouth. God would have to spew himself out of his mouth if that was written to the church because we're bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. It's the wrong context for that verse. It's not that verse is not talking to the church. Another thing, think of this point. Jesus Christ, if you could be lost after being saved, Jesus Christ would have been a failure as an intercessor. 
Isn't that right? I mean, how, how can you, you go anywhere but there? If you could lose it, Christ would have failed as an intercessor. Where am I? Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7, 22. I'm going to read about four verses there. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, Jesus Christ, because he continueth ever. Do you know as a sacrifice, uh, I'd, I'd never heard this before, I, th I think, until I heard Brother Greg Eastep preach it. Christ is an eternal sacrifice. Sin had eternal consequences, so does the forgiveness of sins. The intercessor, Jesus Christ, as long as he lives, I live. I, was cruci I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. See, because Jesus lives. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. As long as he's alive, I'm alive. But now hath God set the members, everyone in the body, as it has pleased him. Now, now Hebrews 7, 22. Let me get back to where I was. By so much was Jesus made a surety of better testament, and they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. Those Old Testament priests, they weren't a, a, an eternal, they didn't offer an eternal sacrifice, just covered the sins. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, watch it, he is even, he is able also, it says, to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Watch it, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. If you could lose it, what, what do you do with that? What do you do with that passage? If you could have it today and, and today here today and gone tomorrow, what, what are you going to do with that passage? All right, uh, look at uh, John 17. <clears throat> John 17, 1, the context here is the Lord's high priestly prayer to the Father. To most Bible believers, uh, they see this as actually the Lord's prayer. What the world, uh, what most of the time modernists will tell you the Lord's prayer is actually the disciples prayer our father which art in heaven says and any and, or and he tells them pray ye tells the disciples pray ye this is the lord praying to the father john 17 1 these words spake jesus and lifted it up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour has come glorify thy son also that thy son also may glorify thee then in verse 9 I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. While I was in the world, I kept them in thy name. I'm in verse 12. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. That's the ones that he knew. Not the ones that never knew him. None of them is lost but the son of perdition. Son of perdition was never saved to begin with. That the scripture might be fulfilled. He says, I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but thou shouldst keep them from the evil. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall, future tense, believe on me through their word. You got a good testimony, you, 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 through your testimony, you can, you can make believers out of folks. That uh, woman at the well, she just got saved, just got saved, run into town. Oh, come see a man that told me all things, whichever I did. Is not this the Christ? And said, many believe because of the saying of the woman. That they all may be as one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they, I'm in verse 21. Also be one in us that the world may believe that you, that thou hast sent me. And, and, and if, if you don't understand that thing, you could be, you know, you could be saved or lost multiple times. What's that? But the Lord said it's not that way. A common sense would tell a person 
that a believer is still in the same flesh that he was when he got saved. I didn't do anything to merit salvation. I, I don't know what I can do to, ki to keep it. All right. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. What, that flesh don't get changed till the rapture, till we get a new body. You got to deal with the one that you're in now and know that it's subject to sin and it's vile and it's corrupt. Paul said, I know within me that is in my flesh dwells no good thing. All right. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Now I say, brethren, that the flesh, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption. You know what he's talking about? This body of flesh is corrupt. Man, I've done a bunch of funerals, and that body laying in that, that casket, it corrupts. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Then he said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In the moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible, this old body of flesh must put on incorruption. We don't do that while we're alive. God didn't save your body. He saved your soul and spirit. And cut that soul and spirit loose from this body of flesh. Nailed it to the cross. When I sin in the flesh, that sin is, is identified with a sacrificial work of the cross of Christ. Not imputed. Not reckoned to that new creature who is hid with God in Christ. My, my, my. So this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal, when this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall we brought the past the saying, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? But thanks be to God which give us the victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about Colossians 2. Where in, in this passage, Colossians 2, down starting around verse 8, 7 or 8, in there, it talks about a spiritual operation where that body of flesh is no longer identified with the soul of spirit. It's cut loose. Colossians 2.8 Beware lest any man spoil you, spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, not after Christ. For in him, Jesus Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye, here it is, 2.10 Ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Now here's the operation of God that takes place the moment you get saved. Now I'll refer for a second back to Old Testament circumcision. God commanded Abraham to take every, chip, uh, every uh, infant, male infant on, on the eighth day, you circumcise him. And it's a picture. In fact, it said God gave Abraham the token of circumcision. It's looking forward to the new birth where a person puts off the old flesh. This is an analogy God used. In whom also ye are circumcised, not the Abrahamic thing here, with a circumcision made without hands, it's a spiritual operation, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. Who does the surgery? Who does the operation? God. Who hath raised him from the dead. If you understand that, that's what happened, that you got a body, soul, and spirit. That soul and spirit are glued to that body of flesh. That's why the Lord talked about those in the Old Testament. The Lord said, ye who are dead and sin and the uncircumcision of your flesh. But now you're quickened. You're cut loose and made alive. That body of flesh is a different entity altogether. 
Body goes to the grave. The soul and spirit go to be with God. Where, where was I? I'll move on from that. How about justification? The doctrine of justification would be silly if you could lose your salvation. Does that make sense? Romans 5.1 Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch it. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein you stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. But God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect. It is God that justifieth. Somebody fall into a sin? Who justifies you? It's your God that justifies you. Hmm. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. God says you're justified because of my precious son Jesus Christ. You're saved because of my precious son Jesus Christ. Your lives are hid in my precious son Jesus Christ. And the body of flesh and the sins of it are identified with the crucifixion of Christ. And you as a new creature are identified with a risen Savior. And you, you are identified with his holiness. Not your own. All right, where the justification? A believer would be more powerful than the Holy Spirit, I guess. If you could lose it. Ephesians 4.30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. But you think, you're strong, you think, well, I'm strong enough, I can break that seal if I want to. No, you're not. You couldn't if you wanted to. Because you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Esther 8.8 8, That which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring can no man reverse. <laughs> I'm sealed with the precious Holy Spirit of God. My name's written down. In the Lamb's book of life. And nobody's going to take that away from me. As long as the Lord lives, I'm with him. I'm part of his body. I'm bone of his bone. Flesh of his flesh. <coughs> the devil himself is not powerful enough to rescue you from God. A believer could be unborn and born again and again and again if you don't understand this thing about eternal security. John 3, 3, Jesus said, This is Nicodemus and the Lord having this conversation. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Remember the context? Nicodemus shows up. He's uh, one, of the, one of the Pharisees, one of the leaders. And, and he said, well, Lord, we know that thou art a teacher sent from God, for no man can uh, do with these uh, miracles except God be uh, with him. The Lord said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What Nicodemus said, he said, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered and said, answered and said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, referring to the water, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. <laughs> Talking about the, the flesh birth. The words used to describe salvation, would, 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 they'd be meaningless if you could lose it. Shall never perish. And I give to them everlasting life. They shall never perish. Eternal. Eternal life. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. How long is that? It's everlasting. It lasts forever. I mean, what, why would somebody want to mess with that? John 3, 36. 
He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Hmm. John 5, 24, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Is it everlasting or eternal in that verse? Hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. Do you say, did you get that? You believe on him, you're not going to come into condemnation because the Lord said so. Man, uh, put this thing behind you and, and, and do some jumping jacks or somersaults or run the aisle or something knowing that you can't come into condemnation because of Jesus Christ. He's the one that said it. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death into life. My, my, my. John 6, 37, he said, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. I mean, how, how many verses does it take? John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. They follow me and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? John said, and John 14 said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you and to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. It. And Thomas said, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. My, my, my. Jesus saith, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. That's the Holy Spirit. He identifies it in the next verse. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, nor knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfort. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me because I live. Ye shall live also. At that day uh, ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. These words spake Jesus in 17.1. I, I read that verse, lifted up his eyes to heaven, said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy Son. Verse after verse after verse, scripture after scripture. And, and I haven't even got a, a good start. On all the verses. You know what Paul said? He said in, in Romans 5. Correction. Romans 8.38. For I am persuaded. That neither death. Nor life. Nor angels. Nor principalities. Nor powers. Nor things present. Nor things to come. Nor height. Nor depth. Nor any other creature. Shall be able to separate us. From the love of God. Which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wages of sin is death, says in Romans 6, 23, but the gift of God, you don't earn a gift. The gift of God is eternal, eternal life, eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Don't say you might be. Say, well, maybe for a while. Don't say that. For with the heart, Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We were, Sam and I were, Brother Sam and I were talking before church about <coughs> Some folks are saved and don't even know they're saved because they've been taught that they can lose it. They've been taught that they've got to live it or they're going to lose it. I guarantee you 
the, the, the Mormons, there's a ton of Mormons, former Baptists that are saved and think that they got to live it. Now they're being taught wrong. Don't change their salvation. That was a done deal. If they trusted Christ, maybe somebody trusted Christ as a child with simple faith. Lord says, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of God, I think he says. Now, what, for, let's give an example. Say you take a child. A child gets saved uh, uh, at a young age. And, and he did what, what God required of him. God saved that boy. And say that boy gets adopted out into a family of non-believers. And he don't hear a thing about Jesus Christ. He goes on with his worldly life. Never does anything to the glory of God. Still saved. He may even be taught to believe there wasn't a God. What do you do with something like that? How can that happen? Well, I don't think that will ever happen if he was really saved. I don't know. I do know this. The Bible says God is faithful. He said if we believe not, God is faithful and cannot deny himself. He has to do what he said he'd do no matter where we go. Isn't that wild? Man, now I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting a lot of head shaking now. I better get off this stuff. But hey, I'm just glad I'm saved. My mama said it set her free when she found out that she, could, she couldn't lose it. it. It took a big burden off her back. I don't want to live my life scared to death that I'm going to do something tonight that's going to send me to hell. You need to have that peace. Get this thing settled. Settle it therefore, the Bible says in your heart. Get it settled. Just what the book says. We're just trying to, uh, to set you free. Set at liberty the captives. I'm not captive to the law. I'm not captive to sin. I, wanna, I, uh, I strive to bring everything into the captivity of Christ. To the obedience of Christ. Every thought into the captivity of the obedience of Christ. Eternal security, what, a, what an amazing Bible doctrine. Man, if, 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 I, if, if the Bible hit, didn't teach that, if, if I had to live it to keep it, never make it. I never make it. I understand when Paul said that these, this flesh is vile. Don't trust it. Don't trust your flesh. Paul said we are of those that have no confidence in the flesh. What's that verse mean? Well, if you're confident, then you can keep it by being such a good and wonderful, godly human being. Good luck. Because Paul said we are of those who have no confidence in the flesh. If anybody can lose it, I can lose it. I thank God through my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Buried with him in baptism. Risen with him. The newness of life. A new creature in Christ. Born again. Born again. Free from sin. All right, I'm done. Everyone stand up tonight. If you're here tonight, you better make sure you're in that crowd where I never knew them. You need to be in the crowd that he knows you. You know him and he knows you. My, my, my. Ain't God good. And we'll sing a verse of a song of invitation. Tuesday night.